89.3 and 88.5 Yes FM. Online at www.yeshome.com. Now on the free Yes FM iTunes app and the Yes FM Android app or the free tune in radio app. Search Yes FM Lima. We are going to the phone lines where we are joined by Angie Smith. She's the author of the book Chasing God. Angie, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It is, it is good to have you with us. And I think this is, uh, uh, Man, just a fascinating book because I think so many people can relate to your story and can relate to kind of what you went through. Uh, tell us a little bit about because it's it's a pretty dramatic story that, that that led up to to writing this book. Can you give us a little bit of the background to it? Yeah, well, this one in particular was, um, yeah, it was one of those books where I sat down and I had a deadline and a blank screen and I was trying to do it and it just nothing would come to me and so. Um, just spent some time praying about it, and I felt like, you know, there was this one day that I was like, I I don't know what I'm doing wrong, God. Like, I, I don't, you know. And it was just kind of like a breakdown in my faith, to be honest. Mm. And I felt like he just told me to stop chasing him. Mm. Um, and that didn't really make sense to me in the moment, because in my mind, that was always, you know, a good thing. Chasing God is a good thing. Right. It, it, that's how I thought of it, at least, you know. But then I came to realize over the next several months that really I was putting effort, a lot of effort, into things that God never asked me to put effort into. And so that's where the feeling of chasing came in. And I know you you talk a little bit about the the struggle you had with your faith. And, you, I mean, you guys have been through a lot. You had, you had lost a daughter. I mean, and God had seen you through these times. And I do think sometimes, especially people who've been Christians for a while, and they've, they've gone through hard times with God, and they're like, yeah, I'm solid with God. And then they'll hit that patch where things get dry, yeah. and and all the and they start questioning their faith, and they're like, wait a minute, I thought I was past all this. What am I doing here? Right, right. Yeah, and I think for me, what's interesting is those seasons are, are just moments even of doubt. I, I just beat myself up about it so mm-hmm. much. You know, I thought, man, I don't think I'm... I'm a terrible Christian if I'm struggling with these kinds of things. And so part of writing this book was sort of diving back into Scripture from a base level and trying to understand, you know, what does it really look like to follow God instead of chase Him? And what I found was that some of the things I beat myself up about, God never beats us up about. Mm. Um, And so that was really refreshing for me. And honestly, doubt was one of those. Um, Just sort of studying Thomas and other people in the world that were went through seasons where they doubted and just to see the Lord's response to them, it was kind because he knew that their heart was really genuinely seeking a true belief. Um, and that, that healed me so much because I felt like I was a failure if I went through those times, you know? Mm. Yeah. Like it's, it's wrong for us to ever ask questions of God. Like he maybe right. can't handle them. We don't want to stump him, so we right. better not I ask know. him any questions. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And not to mention <laughs> that anyway. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you you mentioned this already a little bit, but I, I but I really think it's an important point that the difference between chasing God and following God. Can you just expand on that a little more? Because I think it, it, that really is kind of the heart of the book, and and I think such a vital point because I do think as Christians sometimes we do get caught up chasing God and not following Him. Yeah, so for me, it was just like, this is exhausting. You know, like, my Mm -hmm. faith feels exhausting. Right. And it doesn't necessarily feel like I'm getting closer to God. I just kind of feel like I'm going through the motions. And so um, I sort of had to take a step back and and start from the beginning and, and make sure that I was understanding things, even as basic as the concept of salvation. You know, really like okay, is this something that I'm chasing? Am I, am I constantly trying to, like, secure my own salvation? Or am I following God and trusting what His Word says about salvation? Mm. Um, and so then sort of taking that bird's-eye view of Scripture um, on lots of different things and, and kind of relearning my faith and realizing that a lot of the places that I've been spinning my wheels and running on a treadmill chasing him were not at all things that he's ever called me to. And so the book sort of goes through the distinction between the things for lots of different areas of faith. And you talk about also the problem with Christianity and and overachievers, people who maybe just, that's their nature. Uh, How does that, how can that affect our, our spiritual life with God? 
Well, for me, it just makes me such a doer, you know? Mm. I mean, I have to have a checklist. I have <laughs> to have... Um, it, it's totally my nature. And so I really struggle with that. It Just being with God instead of doing for... Totally honest, I think that's probably something I'm going to struggle with for the rest of my life. But it's kind of like, you know, call it what it is and just say, this is an area where I really need you to help me, Lord. Help me just rest in who you are and not constantly feel like it's up to me and it's on my shoulders to keep this relationship together. Um, I think I tend to do that with people too. You know, it's that sense of like, it's on me, it's on me. Mm. And so the Lord is just gradually stripping that from me and saying, no, I'm, I'm the pursuer and, um, and I've come for you. So all you have to do is just trust and rest here. And that it's harder to live out than it is to say, but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always harder to live out than it is to say. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think the, that we get caught up in this idea of chasing God instead of just following Him or being with Him? Because maybe we don't fully understand the nature of, of grace and what God has done for us in that in grace. Yeah, I mean, I think it's 100%. I think that's exactly what it boils down to. Um, and really, even for those of us who are living in God's promise, grace is still unfathomable. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it just does not seem like an economy that makes sense. And so I do think it's, it's natural to be exerting effort. And the way that I say it in the book, and I think this sentence sort of summarizes the heart of the book, is just any time I felt like there were gaps in my faith, I filled them with religion. Mm. And and that's the difference, you know, is we we can't just be cramming things into our lives because they satisfy this need in us to feel like we're checking off a, a list. You know, it's about a relationship with God. And, um, and I think it, it's only through that relationship that we do start to have any kind of grasp of what grace is. So how does it, how has it changed? And I know it realize it's a process for you. I, you know, it's going to be a process for all of us. But as you kind of changed in this understanding, how has your walk with God changed? When, when you cease to be a chaser and become a follower, how does that begin to look different, that, that relationship with God? Well, for me, I think it's it's a gradual, it's, it's a conversation in my head that's constantly there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just, it's sort of like given me a watermark, you know? It's given me a, a foundation that I sort of <clears throat> go back on. So when I start to have those moments of like, oh, I'm, I'm worried about this, or oh, I'm doing this, now I sort of feel like I have this, place to go back to, um, it sort of just drew a line in the sand for me of now I have a category for it. You know, when Mm -hmm. I'm doing this, it's sort of about digging into my motives and having that conversation with the Lord a lot sooner than I would have if I would have had it at all before. So honestly, it it changes every single part of it. And I think for the better. Yeah. And like you mentioned before, you know, that when when our faith seems exhausting, that's probably a good sign that we're we're off track a little because God does call us into exactly. a rest. You know, He says, "My burden is easy, my yoke is light." It's not supposed to be exhausting; yep. it's supposed to be refreshing and renewing. Right, right. And so, you know, we're we are called to be running a race and to persevere. And we know that there is going to be, you know, hopefully we're going to get to the finish line and we're going to be sweating. I mean, we're going to yeah. feel like we've <laughs> run our race, but that's not to say that our relationship with him should feel that way. Mm-hmm. And I think that's maybe where I had gotten things um, had sort of mixed up what my role was as a believer and what my role was just in relationship with him. And we talked to too a little bit about doubt and, and expressing doubt in our faith and how, you know, not just that it's okay, but the idea that um, our doubts become opportunities for God to teach us. I think we, we we can change our focus in that way. It seems to me that's a big step in, you know, because when we're chasing God, I feel like maybe we feel like we have to provide that answer. I have to figure out what God's yeah. doing instead of allowing God to, to show me. Is that is that right. a fair statement? Right. I think it is. Um, and you know what, in a lot of different 
years of life, that that method works. Um, but when you're talking about an invisible God, <laughs> it becomes more complicated. Um, and so, yeah, the story of Thomas is always has always been one that I've loved, but I don't think it was until I really studied it for this book that I just, he, he moves me so much. And I think it's because I always saw him as like just doubter, you know? Mm-hmm. And really the only, the two other times we see him in scripture, he's a pretty devout follower of Christ. Um, and so I, I guess I didn't realize that going into it. And, but God did. And so in the moment where Thomas is saying, well, I'm just, I'm not going to believe this, you know, unless I see it, unless I put my hand in the wound, like, I'm not believing it. I'm a doubter. And it so struck me that when Christ finally comes back and is standing before him and invites him to do exactly that, Scripture never actually tells us that he touches him. Um, The only thing we know for certain is that he says, my Lord and my God. And so there was something in that moment that defied everything he thought was necessary for him to believe. So he had sort of set up this, these these standards of there is no way I'll do it until I get to touch this. That is my standard. And I think we do that. You know, like mm-hmm. this is my standard. Bottom line, if if you cure my cancer, then I will believe in you. If you heal my marriage, if you, you know, mm. we, we throw out these sort of like if-then statements. And I think that sometimes reading a story like that in Scripture can remind us that here's a person who did the same thing and in that moment, he saw enough of God to drop everything he thought was necessary. And that's my prayer, too. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and so often I think we pray to God to, you know, I'll believe you if you do this. And we forget that, that how he often changes those circumstances is by changing us. Right. Absolutely. We're waiting for that miracle to come from the outside. And God says, no, if yes. you want change, I'm going to have to work it from the inside. And you're going to have to draw close to me for that to happen. Yes, exactly. We're talking with, with Angie Smith. She's the author of the book, Chasing God. And uh, Angie, if folks want to find out more information about this book or others that you've written, you know, you've got a blog, yeah. how can they do so? Yeah. Um, AngieSmithOnline.com is probably the easiest way. And it really is a, is a fa- fantastic book. And, and I just, I think it's so timely because I think so many people can relate to what you're talking about because I think it's easy to get caught up in this, you know, almost imperceptibly, you know, it's like you've been a Christian for a while. It's it's almost like you just fall into it by accident. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think it's a wonderful book. We do have a copy. If you'd like a copy of Angie's book, 419-240-1937 or 1-800-457-1937. We'll take caller number four. If you'd like a copy of Angie's book, Chasing God, 419-240-1937 or 1-800-457-1937. Hey, Angie, thank you so much for spending some time. It's been great talking with you this morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless. Thanks. You too. Yes, FM.